welcome to A Psychology. If you're new here, hello, I'm Miss M. I am your tutor for everything psychology. So whether you're in the ACE program or whether you just want to be an ACE at psychology, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with the latest psychology info and theories. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the five things that you're going to do to pass your AS level psychology exam for the 990 syllabus. Now we are in the 2024 syllabus right now, and there are a a couple changes if you haven't already noticed there are new studies um, but the main idea of paper one and paper two are still the same now in another video I will be going over paper three and paper four but for now we are doing the AS so level let's start with number one now the first thing that you're gonna have to do in order to pass your A psychology exam, never mind pass, what you're gonna need to do to get an A is to study your vocab terminology. Now there are approximately 90, 92, 93 different terms for research methods. And if you don't have a core understanding of these research terms, then you're gonna be completely lost when you're trying to study the research studies themselves. You're not going to understand the jargon. You're not going to understand the lingo. You're not going to know what people are talking about in the study. Now, I, I feel like this is the core part of understanding and passing your exam is knowing the terminology. Now, if you need a little bit more help in this, let's say you don't have a book or you don't have a Quizlet, which I would recommend doing both, finding Quizlets. Just, I would... I would have you make sure that when you're looking up people's Quizlets to make sure that they are valid, okay, validity, valid, make sure that this is maybe a teacher that's created it instead of like another student, just to be on the safe side. Now, if you do want something that is completely valid, I have two different versions of 92 different research terminology cards for you. If you are someone who likes a handheld version, you can head to the link down below. It'll redirect you to a website that's a print on demand. You can order the deck yourself. Now, the definitions on these cards are a lot more in depth than you'll find in the book. Sometimes this is good for people because it gives them more of an understanding of the terminology. Sometimes people would prefer a one sentence vocabulary definition. If you are somebody who would like a digital copy of this, that is located in my Patreon shop. So I'll also put the link down below for that. Now, Vocab terminology is going to be essential for you in passing. And it's not just the definitions that you're going to need to know. So this is number two on our countdown of five things you need to know. So number two, you need to know the strengths and the weaknesses of the terms. Now, this isn't the definition. This is like answering, why is it good to have this in my study? Why is it bad? And it may not necessarily be something that is like bad, but they, they just may place limitations on you if this is in your study versus maybe something else. And here's an example. So let's use quantitative data. Now, the definition of quantitative data is having some type of numerical data, some numbers. And when we have this in a study, this is great. A strength of quantitative data is that we can compare data. We can create statistics. We can create bar graphs and charts and histographs. And this allows us to see trends in data. Now, a limitation to having quantitative data in a study is that we don't necessarily know why participants behaved the way they did. We don't have any feedback from the participants. And this can, this is a limitation because we don't really know why something happened. 
Now, understanding the strengths and the weaknesses are going to help you to evaluate during your exam. It's going to help you say, quantitative data was present in this study and this was good because. Now, remember that when you're answering your exams, it's always important to give an example from the study as well as state that strength or weakness that is very generic. So by you memorizing these generic strengths and weaknesses, and I would recommend two strengths and two weaknesses of each of the vocab terms. And out of the 90 vocab terminology, I would say there's maybe 30 of them that you're going to need to know the strengths and the weaknesses of. And those are the main ones like quantitative, qualitative data, um, lab experiments, field experiments, case studies. Now I'm not going to go into depth in this video, but if you are part of my Patreon classroom, you will get an entire list of the advantages and disadvantages vocab terminology. And I have a list of like 27 to 30 in there that you'll need to know. Luckily, if you are smart about it and you realize that there are some terms that are paired together together that are opposites of one another. So you don't necessarily have to study all 30 of them. You can kind of study less or half if that makes sense. So here's an example. If you have quantitative and qualitative data, then the strengths of quantitative data are the weaknesses of qualitative data. So for example, we used quantitative data earlier and we stated that a strength is that you can you can have numbers that you can create statistics and a weakness of qualitative data is that you have no numbers and you cannot create statistics so by knowing the strengths and the weaknesses of one you automatically know the strengths and the weaknesses of others and i'll give you some other examples nature versus nurture have opposites individual versus situational have opposites um, lab versus field have opposites, um, longitudinal versus snapshot have opposites, reductionism versus holism has opposites. Okay, so let's get into number three, what you need to know to pass your A psychology exam. No, no, no. What you need to do to get an A. Okay, so understanding the approaches is really important. I do have a few videos out and there will be more coming out on each approach and what they actually mean, the assumptions, and we call it the assumptions of the approaches. And there are four approaches. We have biological, cognitive, social, and learning. And they're all basically taking ideas such as behavior, and we're giving it a reason for its existence, a reason for us to believe that it exists. Okay, I know that was repetitive, but um, for example, if you want to take the biological approach, uh, a reason for behavior might be hormones or genetics. And in the social approach, a reason for behavior might be society or the house that you grew up in social norms in society, okay? So each approach is going to have a different reason for, let's say, behavior to exist. And you have to know the assumptions of each approach and the strengths and the weaknesses of each approach. Because when we talk about an approach in psychology, it's a very narrow field. We don't go into detail of saying, well, it could be this and it could be this. It's basically taking one theory, one very narrow road in psychology in saying that behavior is due to hormones or behavior is due to genetics, okay? So make sure that you are very much so understanding of the four approaches and make sure that you know which study belongs to which approach. So it would be really helpful if you studied the, the research articles in order of their approaches. And remember, there's three studies per approach. There's four approaches, there are 12 studies. And so, um, for example, in one of your exams, you may be asked to compare and contrast a cognitive study 
to a biological study. And in your answer, you're going to need to say, this is a cognitive study, this is a biological study, this is why they're similar, this is why they're different. All right, number four. This is the fourth thing you're going to do to ace that psychology exam. You need to know the main points of all of the studies. And I know it might be difficult for you to say, I can't memorize the entire study. That's okay. I have videos. I have older videos of some of the studies that have been in the syllabus for many years, like Piliavin and Milgram, Baron Cohen, uh, Dement and Kleitman. Those are all down below. And I will make other videos in the future. They may be out now. Who knows? Now, what I also would suggest is jumping on my Patreon because I do have the new versions, the new studies in there. Um, and for the first year, at least for now, I will only have those available on Patreon. So if you're interested in being part of my Patreon, that link will be down below as well. So know the main points of each study. Know the methodology. Know the procedure know the ethics, and be able to evaluate it. So when I say methodology, this is stuff like, was it a lab or a field experiment? Did it have observations? Did it have questionnaires? Did it have self-reports? What types were in there? Know the independent and the dependent variable. Know the sample, how the participants were sampled. Um, know how all of the participants were allocated to the independent variable. So was it an independent design? Was it a repeated measures? Did it have matched pairs in it? If it had matched pairs, what were they matched for? So in Baron Cohen's study, they were matched for IQ. So just know what they were matched for. There aren't a lot of studies that have matched pairs. So just keep that in mind. When I talk about procedure, this is almost like playing in your head like a story, a visual story of what the participants had to go through during their time in the study. So for Milgram, there was a plot scene, basically. Remember, this is a pilot study. Milgram study is, is a pilot study. So what we see here is our participants came in, they drew for lots, they were always the teacher, they got brought back, they saw the learner. Um, get hooked up to a fake shock machine. They got a 45 volt shock. We brought the teacher back to the other side, showed them how to give the questions to the learner. Just knowing and understanding the procedure, being able to visualize it in your head. If, if you have to go ahead and just like look up and see if there is some video footage on YouTube so that you get a good idea or a good visual of what happened. And you can always look at my other videos. I have playlists available on my YouTube channel so you can go check those out as well. All right. Now, the very last thing, number five, what you're going to do to ace this psychology exam, you are going to study your command words. Now, you may say, what does this have to do with the 990 syllabus? This has more to do with how to answer your questions on paper one, paper two, paper three, and paper four. So command words are going to be the words that they command the answer from you, whether they may use words like outline, describe, evaluate, explain, suggest. Now, knowing what those words mean is going to allocate, it's going to dictate how you write your answer. And let's just say we want to outline four results from Dement and Kleitman, and it's four points. Now, if you spend too much time describing what happened in the results, which Technically, if you're describing information, that's the conclusion. Results are usually numbers and very quick facts. So it would make sense that you were going to outline the results. And you want to give very quick ideas, just the main points. One, two, three, four. Four main points to get your four points. And it's really important because these the, the way that the questions are stated on the exam those are all kind of, it fits together in the point system. It fits together in the 
the time that you're given, the hour and a half that you're given to take your exam. So if you're overwriting in some of the really short answer questions, then that doesn't leave you enough time in other areas. So you want to make sure that you write just the right amount. Yes, you can use bullet points, but studying those command words, that is really what's going to help you understand what the question is asking and how to answer it in your exam. Now, I'll give you a quick hint since we're here. In paper one, it's advised to go to the end and do the big questions first. The reason I always tell people this is because the big chunk questions, the eight and the 10 point questions, that's a big chunk of your point system. And if you can take like, you know, it's, I always like to say one and a half minutes per point. So if it's 10 points, give yourself 15 minutes to write that 10 point answer. And it's usually going to be something that says explain or evaluate. When you explain something, you're giving a lot of detail. When you're evaluating something, you're doing the strengths and the weaknesses, the pros and the cons, and you're giving examples. So make sure you study those command words. Let's go over these again. Okay. Now, you're going to study your research vocabulary. You're going to study the strengths and the weaknesses of those vocabulary terms, approximately 30 of them, the main idea, the main ones, lab, uh, field experiments, uh, observations, covert, um, overt observations. You're going to study things like validity, reliability, um, ecological validity. You're going to study things like independent uh, measures, repeated measures, um, different sampling techniques, uh, random versus uh, opportunity versus volunteer. Those ideas, the things that we see in the study, those are going to be what we need to have an idea of like the strengths and the weaknesses are because some studies have them, some studies don't. And when you're creating a study, sometimes you only have the opportunity to choose one. So we want to know, does that, is that fit the study well? Does that make it a good study? Are we able to generalize from this information? You're also going to study each approach, okay? And you're going to know the strengths and weaknesses of those approaches, and you're going to know all of the studies that fit within each approach. You're going to know the main points of each study. Just those terms that I talked about of knowing the, the strengths and the weaknesses, that is what you need to know in your studies. You need to know what type of experiment was it? What was the sampling? What was the independent variables? How were they allocated? Um, what was the procedures? What were the ethics involved? And the last thing that you're going to want to do is study those command words so that you know exactly how to answer the questions and that you don't waste time and, you know, run out of time at the end. Whoo! Okay. I really hope this video helps you. I am here for you. If you have any questions, maybe things that I didn't answer in this video, write them down below in the comments. I'm always here. If you want some one-on-one -on -one interaction, join my Patreon classroom. The research vocab terminology links are in there. The research vocabulary digital copies are in there and there are all kinds of other materials such as slideshows for the new studies, full videos for the new studies. So I hope to see you there. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and, and I'll be waiting for you to tell me that you passed. <laughs>